Hi, how's it going? So, where are we at this point? Well, we have created an instance and set up a debug messenger. The next stage is we want to grab a device. But to start with, I'm just going to refactor things a little bit. So note that we have all this uh, instance, debug messenger, and um, instance-based dynamic dispatcher. Well, I'm going to kind of group them all together because those were all kind of based on those were all kind of based on the instance. So there they are; they're grouped together. And similarly, I'm going to actually group that functionality into one. Um, function. So if we go to the source code, Okay, so this, this kind of makes it, it's a bit more logical now. Um, make instance actually makes all of the instance related uh, components of the engine. Um, yep, nope, and that, the rest of that looks great. Okay, so now we're going to look at the device stuff. So we're gonna have a function called make device, which will set up anything related to the device. And at the moment, the only thing we're gonna do is um, basically choose a physical device from the system. Okay, so um, we are going to make another file where this uh, choose physical device function will be declared. Um, so we'll go add your item, we're gonna call this device.h, awesome. and a flag for whether we'll be debugging. And for now, we'll just return nothing, just to satisfy the signature. And there we have it. Side note, in the C API, um, these instance things would be handles, would be 64-bit types, basically, and we could pass that in just the same. Um, under the C++ API, they are um, classes, so, we need to, well, we don't need to, but it's a little more efficient if we put references to them instead. Okay, good, 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 good. Then we just need to include that. Good, okay. So we've got access there. Then we're just going to...
just print something out to check that it's working. Of course. We need to actually call that. Awesome. Okay, so we run that and we are, we're in the function. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so to start with, uh, just a little note. So this is just copy pasted from the uh, Vulkan specification. Uh, it says here, um, we have physical and logical devices. A physical device kind of represents an implementation of Vulkan, which is already there, right? Um, there's a finite number because we have a finite number of graphics cards. For most people, it's one. Based on your system, you might have more than one. Um, or you could be working on a distributed network of, like a render farm and you have all these different devices. Side note, going a little off topic here, but it kind of is relevant. In Vulkan, there's something called device groups. Now, device groups are different devices which are not physically attached to each other in some sense, but they nevertheless share the same memory space. So for instance, if we had a server of GPUs, an array of GPUs, and they were all kind of um, coordinated, they would come under one device group. And so we could make um, like 32 different physical devices and then map to them under the one logical device since they're in the same device group. But anyway, so uh, then we have a logical device and a logical device is the kind of side, you know, we get the physical device, we register that, and then we create an abstraction of, of it. Um, and that's a logical device. We'll be looking at that at a later point. So for now, for now, what we want to do is just look at the physical device. Okay. So um, also, side note, what we're doing here is really, what we're doing here is really choosing a physical device, okay? We're not creating anything, we're not allocating any memory, and we will not need to clean this up later. Okay. Okay, so the first step is to um, query our system and say what devices are available. Now, as we can see here, this is the um, C++ wrapper definition of this function. It's a little bit verbose um, and here's the kind of the gist of it. So this function takes in or doesn't have to take in anything by default. It'll statically load the um, function and um, produce a vector of physical devices. Now, um, what we can then do is get the number of physical devices on the system and then we want to basically check uh, whether, like loop through those devices and check whether they are suitable for our purposes. So I'm just gonna leave this stuff off for now. We'll get back to it later. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of this too. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay, so run this right now. And it says, there are one physical devices. Awesome. There are one physical devices. Hope it's suitable. Okay. So the next thing I want to do <clears throat> is I'm going to make a function just to kind of, it's interesting, just to kind of query some of the um, functionality that we have here. Okay. So this function takes a physical device and it, um, basically prints some stuff about it. So what we do is we have this um, get properties function. Now, originally, this is a bit, this is a bit kind of funky. Um, this is originally calling um, the Vulkan get physical device properties function. And that takes the arguments of a physical device and a pointer, which will be um, filled up with the set of properties. Um, but the C++ wrapper really kind of changes that signature a lot. Um, so it's not, you'd think it'd be something like, um, so I was playing around with this the other day. I'd, I'd want it to be something like uh, Vulkan get 
physical device property, something like, that, something like that, given that the original um, signature is VK get. that. Um, so then some of these are because they're based on like instances or devices or something would be something like device dot and then we want to go okay device dot get you know what I mean so it's just it's just a little bit of word salad trying to pick exactly what um, exactly what they've done there but we can look up the documentation for the C++ um, wrapper online or another thing we can do another thing we can do is we can look at code that other people have written with the HPPP header um, so this is I just googled um, Vulkan HPP tutorial or something um, this is the first one that came up it's really really useful yeah okay so like maybe this wasn't as useful as I thought it was going to be but but um, for instance it's the same sort of um, it's the same sort of syntax physical device dot get memory properties well this is physical device dot get device properties anyway so then the next thing we have is um, these are the the fields of the uh, physical device properties structure so it's got things like an API version driver version all of that stuff and what I want to do is first of all I want to print out the device where is it the, the device name and then um, based on the device type so the device type is an enumer enumerator if we go into this one here we have this enum class physical device type and this um, basically wraps the underlying device types which are defined here as certain bits okay um, and yeah so that's something so let's go ahead and run this and it's not working well something's ah okay Okay, so something very interesting has happened. What's happened is, yeah, what's happened is we've, we've looked at the properties of a physical device and the validation layer has inserted itself in that function call and it has spat out like logging info on like all of the, um, all of the kind of functionality that the device has um, and kind of the version of that functionality. So that's nice, that's cool, that's cool to see. Um, so we've got one physical device, the device name is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. That is right, that is a discrete GPU, which means it is disconnected from the mainframe. It's a separate graphics card. Cool, awesome. So that's cool, we've kind of, um, info dumped our our terminal with all of that validation layer stuff but you know it's useful it's useful so the next thing we want to do is we want to check if the device is suitable so we're going to make a function to check that um, we've got this function which returns whether a device is suitable it takes a physical device and debug um, and then what we do is we build up a list of extensions that we want to run. At this stage, the only thing we're going to check is whether our device can run a swap chain. In other words, whether it can theoretically present images to the screen. So that's why we use this macro um, swap chain extension name, which expands to Vulkan Kronos swap chain. Okay. Then uh, we can print out the set of extensions that we are requesting at the moment. It's only one. And then we have another function which indicates whether the um, device is going to support the extensions in that list. 
Right. So, all right. So then we have this um, check device extension support. Side note, this const just means that um, these things are treated as constants within the function space, which means or function scope, which means they are um, read only. There's no benefit to doing this besides general um, like robustness of code. Okay, so uh, we take in a list of extension names that we're requesting and check if they are supported. What we're going to do is we're going to create a set out of those with the keys being the, um, or the elements being strings. So that's fine. In order to do that, we're just going to need to um, include set. And just to be, sh just to be safe, I think string is already implicitly included in IO stream, but it's probably not a good idea to rely on that. So we're just going to include that as well. Okay. So we take this list and we convert it into a set. Fair enough. Okay. Then we look through all of the, um, extension properties, which, uh, did I include that above? Mm, not quite, but we'll have a look at this as it comes up. So this is all of the um, extensions which the device can support. Okay, um, so we log that and then we attempt to delete it from the set of required extensions, right? Because if it matches up, then we can check it off our list. Okay. Um, then if we have deleted everything, then the set would be empty. Um, and that will indicate whether these requirements have been satisfied. Okay. Right, so let's just try this. Yep, so again, um, it info dumps us many times, but that's okay. Oh no, okay, so what we've done, actually, you know what? This is, a, this is getting a little bit much, so we can go to, um, logging.h and I think we're going to get rid of verbose. That's a bit much. So just warnings and errors from now on. Okay. That's a little more manageable. So, um, yep, yeah, we got one device. Da, 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 da. So we are requesting the swap chain. The device can support these extensions. All of these, um, including down below, swap chain. Um, and yeah, we're good, we're good. So again, we do not have to destroy the device. It exists anywhere. It exists already. Okay, so. There we go. I don't know how we went for time. I'll try to keep it concise, edit it down, but we are done for today. So just to quickly recap, what we did is we took some of these different variables and started to group them together. So we got all the instance related variables together, all the device related, well, there's only one at this point. Then we took that functionality, and we grouped that together into similar functions. So the make instance function does all of the um, instance level stuff. And then the make device function we'll be adding to this later. We're doing more device level stuff. Then we looked at how to um, poll the system to see which devices are available, how to get some of their properties and how to check whether they are good. Okay. So I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.